Um, the purpose today is to bring awareness of the in the veteran community of suicide rates and the epidemic we have with veteran suicide right now in our country. Which is why we're calling it 23 a day. Which is why we're calling it 23 a day. Okay. Right now, that is the statistic that we know of. 23 it's veterans. 23, it's 22 veterans and one active duty a day. A day. Yes, ma'am, a day. So, it's pretty much the biggest death epidemic we've had in a while. And, you know, the suicide rate is 80% more likely in your first three years of returning, of getting out. So you return medically, you get out. Those first three years are your critical years. Those first three years, you have an 80% more chance of killing yourself because there's a higher divorce rate, higher unemployment rate, higher homeless rate. There's a higher rate of everything because your life falls apart. And when you get out, you don't want to ask for help because you feel like a failure. That's a big thing a lot of vets have is that self-failure. And they need to realize they're not a failure. Getting out sucks. It is hard as hell. It's the hardest battle you'll ever fight, ever. And you're never a failure at it. You may fall down, but you're always able to get back up. You need to ask for help. That's the, if I could give any advice to a veteran getting out from just personal experience, always ask for help. You're not a failure, you're not weak. You're not gonna be looked down upon or judged. Just ask for help. Ask for a helping hand and going in the right direction. People that are, a lot of veterans that are suicidal that that are going to do it, they're not the ones reaching out for help, they're not the ones taking advantage of the programs, they're kind of sitting by themselves, instead of going to the veteran community and going, I want help, and they're like, I can do it myself, and fighting an internal war. And then the civilian side, a lot of civilians don't, are being told, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, that's something, it's taboo, just don't even bring it up with a veteran, that's wrong, veterans want to talk about their experience, they're just asking the wrong questions when they talk about it. The questions being asked are, how many firefights did you see, how many people did you kill? You know, did you did any of your friends die? The questions that are taboo to the veteran community that you don't even want to talk about with friends that were there with you. When you're with your veteran buddies, you're talking about, oh, you remember the time you pranked so and so, or you remember, you know, they're talking about the good times, never the bad, and that's the stuff that's never being brought up. That's a question the civilians never going to a soldier and going, you know, how can I, you know, let's talk. You know, if you're at a bar and you see a veteran, let me buy you a beer. You know, tell me about your military experience. That's the the first opening line you do is. Oh, tell me a little bit about your military experience, and that will allow the veteran to talk about what he wants to talk about. If you have a bad day and you're in a troop or a company in a unit and you go to work and you're having a bad day and someone knows, you guarantee it there's a senior NCO that will notice it, pull you to the side, and go, what's going on? Here in the civilian world, you don't have that no more. You have either a spouse or parents or brothers or sisters or some high school friends that will notice your change in behavior but will not talk to you about it because either A, they're scared or they're, they're not noticing the behavior. You, you get them to where they'll open up and start talking and you shut up and sit back and listen. You let them vent, you let them say what they got to say, and you be compassionate. Don't ever accuse or come off like you don't care. You just show compassion. You be a human being and show compassion. That's all we got to do. You just got to be the person they can talk to. It will help a lot because you never know what they're thinking of that day. You never know what's going on in their day. If, you know, that's the day they are planning something and your conversation stop that. I've had veterans where just calling them and talking about their day, you know, a week or two later, they tell me, you know, if I didn't get that call, something bad would've happened. If we didn't talk, something bad would've happened. It happens all the time. You never know the small interaction you have with a veteran, even if it's a five minute talk, what could it, that could do for them down the road, for later down the day, what the mood it could change them into. The worst thing to do is ignore them. You see a veteran, you know, with a veteran hat or whatever, and treating them as an outcast or as a monster. Or an out Even if it's just because you feel awkward that they're there. Because you don't know what to say. You know, it, it's something with you, but the veteran interprets it, it's something with me. A great question is, let's say you're in a bar, and you see someone with a veteran, you walk up and thank you for your service. A lot of veterans feel awkward with that question. I feel awkward. Every time someone comes to thank me for my service, it, it's cool, it, it's rewarding, but at the same time, it's like, that's all you ever get. It's all a handshake, and then they're gone. It's, it's, it's just like a hello. It's, you, you're better off just saying hi and, and going on with your day instead of thank you for your service, a handshake, and they walk off. You know, if you're really, really wanting to talk to a soldier, walk up, you know, you know thank you for your service, and do you want, you know, what did you do in the military? And that allows a blanket question of what did you do in the military to talk about their job, allows that veteran a possibility to talk about what they want to talk about. They can talk about their job, and they can branch off in other subjects.